My name is Irene Gabriel. I'm at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. I'm an associate professor of medicine at Dana-Farber Harvard Medical School in Boston. Dr. Irene Gobriel has published several papers in blood, including a recent one on myeloma that is featured in the second edition of the How I Treat Compendium. I wrote a paper about how I treat smoldering myeloma. I worked in collaboration with Ola Langern and with many people who have been working in the area of smoldering myeloma. One paradigm in myeloma is that we treat patients too late. And I'll explain that myeloma is a condition where it starts with early precursor condition called monoclonal gamopsy of undetermined significance or MGUS to smoldering myeloma, which is still an asymptomatic stage where patients do not have the symptoms, but they are likely going to have them in their lifetime. And then myeloma through active symptomatic disease where they have lesions in their bones or renal failure and so on. And I felt that in other cancers, in solid tumors, we treat patients early to prevent metastatic disease. Yet in myeloma, we're waiting too long until patients have end organ damage and then we treat them. And maybe just by moving therapy early before end organ damage, before we have lytic lesions, we could potentially prevent progression and maybe even cure patients with myeloma. So to answer that question, we actually started a whole clinic at Dana-Farber called the Prevention of Progression Clinic or Center of Prevention of Progression, CPOP. Uh, we're starting now to accrue patients with early precursor conditions and we're trying to ask the question, what leads to progression? What are the causes of clonal evolution in those patients and can we prevent it early? Many patients are diagnosed incidentally. They may either see their doctor for a anemia that was mild anemia or some renal insufficiency that was mild and their physician looks for the protein electrophoresis and then they find that they indeed have an SPEP or serum protein electrophoresis. It's true that this, is, this means that we're missing a lot of patients who are not diagnosed and there's always that question, should we be screening patients if we know that it exists and then potentially prevent that by having truly the population of patients who have MGUS. In the last 10 years, there has been a huge advantage for us that next generation sequencing has started to happen and it's getting cheaper and cheaper for us to be able to do a whole exome sequencing on a very small number of cells. In MGUS and smoldering myeloma, where they have a very small number of tumor cells, now we have the ability to understand which clones are there and which mutations happen at that early step and can we track those steps of progression, which mutations happen after which one, and then potentially we can intervene, we can have precision medicine at the early stages of MGUS and smoldering myeloma. But not only the DNA level, we're now looking at the RNA level, we're looking at the tumor microenvironment and how it regulates the tumor clones, why would they progress in some patients, while others who have the same mutations and the same clones will not progress to myeloma. And we think that maybe the immune system is playing a role, maybe the stroma of the microenvironment is playing a role. And we need to dissect that whole process inside the bone marrow niche. We think cancer or precursor conditions like smoldering or MGUS are truly a disease of an organ like the bone marrow and not just of the cancer cells alone. And we need to understand that whole process so that we can develop therapies that are not just you know, three drugs put together or two drugs put together, but truly designed as a precision medicine for our patients. How I treat smoldering myeloma is a guideline for what we know so far, and it will keep changing very fast. There is a lot of research to be done to truly understand who are the patients who will progress and the patients who will not progress. And in those who have high-risk myeloma, we really think that the time has come for us to start therapy for them. And this is where we have this message in is, we should not be watch and wait for too long because that may be actually a harmful thing for our patients. So we should have better criteria to identify high risk population and we should have good clinical trials and good therapeutic interventions that can prevent progression. And indeed, we're doing all of this work, so it's active. As we start speaking about smoldering myeloma and as we start writing it, it keeps changing and it's a dynamic process. Copies of the How I Treat Compendium, second edition, are available online at hematology.org slash 2015 How I Treat or by calling these numbers 888-2015.